This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. It is 6.53, time to get you ready to take on your Wednesday with the Morning Sprint. Yeah, Sydney Charles has the latest details on sentencing for former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio. Mark Peterson has your forecast on a cloudy, mild day ahead. But first, Washington has some of the highest gas prices in the country. Let's get to Bronte Sorotsky live with details on what's contributing to those higher prices at the pump. Well, one of the reasons that gas prices here in Washington have skyrocketed has to do with the state's cap and trade program. It does a it requires companies to buy carbon allowances for each metric ton of carbon their products emit, meaning it costs companies more money to sell their gas here in Washington. That added cost gets pushed on to drivers. The program aims to reduce state carbon emissions and hopes that the money going towards it can go to projects like replacing gas powered public transit with electric. All right, first alert weather. It is going to be a mild day today, no doubt about it. Somewhat of a cool start. I mean, Deer Park here at 46, 49 in Spangle, 45 into Hayden, but everyone else also is hovering around 50 degrees, so just throw an extra layer on. We are going to see cloud cover throughout the day, then clearing overnight. It'll be sunny tomorrow. It's going to be wonderful. Our day today, yeah, we're starting off in the low 50s, but 74 will be our high today. We now know the name of the man shot and killed in Spokane Valley over the weekend. Police say Dennis Vizina was shot by 46-year-old Jason Barton Saturday near the Jack in the Box on North Argonne. According to newly released court documents, Barton shot Vizina in the back while he was running away. Barton's charged with first-degree murder. A 54-year-old man is in custody accused of firing multiple rounds in Moscow yesterday morning. Investigators say it happened near South Almond and First Streets, just north of Highway 8 and west of 95. Police Police cordoned off a number of blocks and gave a shelter and order place that lasted for hours as they tried to get that man to surrender. He now faces multiple charges, including unlawful discharge of weapons, disturbing the peace, and restricting or obstructing officers. Kootenai County Sheriff's deputies arrested a registered sex offender for violating his probation. He was working the ticket booth at the North Idaho State Fair. The sheriff's office says Richard Landreth, this man from Coeur d'Alene, failed to notify his probation officer of the new employment, and that was a clear violation of his probation. His bond set at a quarter million dollars. The sheriff's office explains that neither the county fairgrounds nor the fair itself had anything to do with that man's hiring, that it was an independent business. The West Bonner County School Board announced it will meet to evaluate its superintendent, Brandon Durst. Last Friday's meeting was canceled when the judge granted a restraining order preventing the board from taking action in regards to the vote that recalled the school board's chair and vice chair. But the agenda does not specify, specify excuse me, what exactly the board is evaluating. Former Proud Boys National Chairman Enrique Tarrio is sentenced to more than two decades behind bars in the longest sentence imposed so far in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Tarrio was not present at the riot, but prosecutors still say he played a key role, arguing that he watched the violence unfold at 2.38 p.m., posting to social media, don't expletive leave. Now, the Justice Department is preparing to put former President Donald Trump on trial at the same courthouse in Washington, D.C., on charges that he illegally schemed to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. I'm next on Good Morning America, breaking news out of Ukraine, where Secretary of State Antony Blinken landed earlier this morning. Also this morning, the lawyers for convicted killer Alex Murdoch are calling for a new trial after accusing the clerk of court, a clerk of court of jury tampering. They join GMA Live coming up in a few moments. If you work at a school, you can get a free coffee today. Wake Up Call is welcoming teachers and staff members back to school with a free drink. The local coffee shop wants to thank and honor the hard work for those who help support, nurture, and educate the children in our community. So today only, teachers and school staff should bring in school IDs to receive a free 20-ounce drink of their choice at any Wake Up Call location. The Riverside School District delayed the start of the school year by a week because of the Oregon Road fire. But the time has come. Classes resume this morning. These empty halls will be filled with students, but back to school looks a lot different for northern Spokane County this year. Some families don't have a home, let alone school supplies. About 100 kids in the district have homes within the fire zone. Some are living in cars or with friends and family. To help, the district is providing transportation for students staying outside of the district's zone. 
to help relieve some of the financial pressures facing families who lost everything in both the Oregon Road and Gray Fires. The Washington Revenue Department announced it will waive or extend the amount of time you'll have to pay your excise tax. For more information, you can go to KXY.com, including a link to file for an extension.